Hey everyone, I have a really exciting show for you today. I have someone on who is gonna help address probably the number one question I have gotten and yet have it answered. And that is, Michael, get, bring someone on the show that can talk about Airbnb. So, uh, you know, you, you, you go out there, you look at your network and sure enough, somebody I know, Kyle Stanley, uh, who's actually been on the show before with Fearless Flipping is like, nope, I'm doing Airbnb and really successful. I'm like, I got to get you on. So let's welcome Kyle back to the show. How are you doing, Kyle? Good. How are you, Michael? I'm doing very, very well. Just in case somebody hasn't seen your first video on my channel, quickly introduce yourself, Kyle, what you do in this real estate game, and then we'll jump into Airbnb. Yeah, uh, I guess really quickly, I started in January of this year, um, just got my fourth short term uh, property locked down. So this will be my fourth flip. Um, and in the meantime, I've been really, really fine trying to find like what will make me different and what is really my niche. And, um, along with having a podcast and YouTube channel, I really have felt like, uh, the Airbnb market, um, I've had, I've dipped my toe in it for the last four years and I just went really full head on into it now and, um, reaping the benefits, excited to share it with your listeners and viewers, excited to help them and give them an opportunity to connect with me at the end for sure. Oh, that's awesome. And just so we're clear, you're doing Airbnb in what city? Fresno, California. And the first <laughs> question I always get is, why does anyone want to stop in Fresno, California? And I thought that same thing in the beginning. Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's address it, right? Because I get that question all the time. I've been in Fresno investing for the better part of 17 years. And I think, no, of course not. I wouldn't Airbnb in Fresno but you're showing me that I'm just stupid. So tell me why it works and, and all of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll back it up with a story. So I started Airbnb when I was in Arizona in 2014. And, you know, that's kind of a no-duh place, right? And that was the first time I'd really heard of Airbnb, even though it'd been around since 2008. I don't really feel like I got like yeah. kind of noticeable until right around that time. I bought my first house. I really shouldn't have bought a house at the time. Um, it was for where I was going to live. It was just kind of like, you know, I was 27 years old and thinking to myself, I need to own a home, just a status thing, really. And as soon as I bought it, I was like, wow, I need to put some roommates in here. And what I didn't know what that was called, you know, house hacking at the time, um, I threw some roommates in there. I still wasn't covering my mortgage. A friend of mine told me about Airbnb. And he pretty much said like word for word, yeah, strangers stay at your house and they come in and out whenever they want and they pay you. And I was like, that sounds so sketchy. And he was like, well, you can call it sketchy, but it's paid me seven grand in the last five months. And I was like, okay, I'm in. Like, yeah. if, you, if you tell me that it's working, you haven't had any issues, I'm in. So I tried it. And ever since then, I've never paid for a mortgage. I've cash flowed in the houses that I've lived in. Um, but then in Fresno, when I moved back here in 2016, to answer your question, um, I moved back because of family reasons. And I thought to myself, well, shoot, like there goes my opportunity for Airbnb because no one's going to want to stay in Fresno. And Michael, I, I put it up on Airbnb on New Year's Eve, very first time just to see what happens. And it was booked in two, two hours. Like literally I couldn't believe it. I was like, why is anyone, a, why is one people wanting to stay here? Um, in Fresno and B, why are they here in Fresno for New Year's Eve? They should be in Vegas or something. And, and then from there, man, it just really, it, it was crazy about every month. If I wasn't booked 15 to 20 nights per month, just one of the rooms in my house, I was shocked. And so what I just did is I Airbnb it for a while, um, was making probably, Oh, with that 15 to 20 nights, about a thousand dollars a month. And then a couple times I was like, you know, I'm going to go out of town. I'm going to see like, what if I just put the whole house on Airbnb? And I had this aha moment back in 2000, beginning of 2018, when I put the whole house on there for one weekend, I made $450 in three days. Wow. And I was like, what just happened? So I don't want to get too much in the story yet. You probably have some backup questions, but I do, that does kind of like lead into what happens next and where, where I evolve from here. But I'm sure you probably have a couple more questions. Yeah. So again, it sounds like not to put words in your mouth, but this is what I heard. You tried Airbnb first as kind of a roommate hack, not, yeah, basically renting a room. And then uh, when you left Arizona, you sold the house, it sounds like, versus kept it as an Airbnb. Okay. So you sold the house. I did. Yeah. Okay. Then came to Fresno, have another house, started again, putting rooms. And now you figured out, no, somebody will do houses and you're like, hey, if some is good, more is better. That's kind of where we are. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, 
So then, uh, long story short, my dad passes away in January. That was why I moved back to Fresno. And, um, you know, silver lining in the whole thing, I got the opportunity to help my mom live with her to kind of help her through the transition. And I kind of said, well, I've got all this equity built up in my home and I'm now renting out the full thing and it's working. What if I move into a better spot? Cause what I always notice is that people were asking me, Hey, I wish you were closer to a highway. I wish you were closer to the airport. I wish you were closer to Fresno state, but it's a great place. We love it. So I was like, I wonder what would happen if I actually got a place closer to there. So I, if you know me, like I'm super analytical, I'm going to, it's going to take me a while to make a big decision like that. I can make some like quick decisions really fast, you know, if it's errands for the day or whatever, but if I'm right. going to like buy a house, sell a house, I got to like really think it through. And so what I decided to do was, um, try out an apartment and in huh. that area, because it was going to be a short term lease. And if I, you know, a, if there was issues and I get kicked out of the apartment, big deal, whatever. Uh, B if, if the area doesn't work, well, at least I didn't buy the house. I just, you know, leased it. So I decided to try this house at that was going to be about three miles away from Fresno state and the airport. Okay. And in the first 30 days, the first three months were booked. Wow. And that was an average of between 22 to $2,600 gross rent for a one bedroom, one bath, 700 square foot apartment. And <laughs> so again, I was, so somebody, you leased it at 750, 800, yeah. and then you put in a bunch of furniture. Yep. And then you leased it for, <laughs> that's so yeah. funny. Okay. I get it. So, so that was the green light for me to um, go for what I had been thinking about for a while, uh, which was selling my home. Sold my home, bought two houses within that same kind of area. Yeah. And um, with the same qualifications, safe neighborhood near the highway, semi near the airport, semi close to Fresno State. And it's been killing it. I mean, like, I just, in, for example, one house this month here in August, still have three nights available left to book on it. And the gross rent so far is $3,900. <laughs> yeah. And my mortgage is 1300. Now the big thing is, you know, I've got more expenses. I got to pay for the utilities and everything. I have to furnish it. Sure. Uh, but here's, here's like the really cool thing, man. So if I were to just do a traditional renting out of these places, a traditional tenant, you know, a lot like what you built your business on. Yep. Um, what I, I mean, Michael, 200, $300 of cash flow is yeah. pretty average. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. One so, at a time. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, I did the math and if I had done that same model, but by the way, you know, I'm, I'm buying, I bought these two houses with cash okay. moving forward in order to scale. I'm going to be doing subject to, I'm going to be doing, you know, some burst strategy stuff to be able to scale. But with these two, I bought them with cash. I bought them with cash each about $40,000 with that 20% down payment. Yeah. If I were just getting 200 to $300 per month, it would take me 16 and a half years to get my investment back. Yep. With Airbnb, very conservatively, so far I've been averaging between twelve hundred to seventeen hundred dollars of cash flow every month with these. That's net. Um, if conservatively I'm getting a thousand dollars a month, I'm going to get my investment back with the extra twenty thousand dollars that I had to put into it with furnishing and fixing up, painting a few different things. That sixty thousand dollars I'm going to get back in only five years versus yeah. that forty thousand dollars I put down. Um, if I was doing a traditional tenant, I'd get back in 16 and a half years. So it's, you know, I be, I'm a believer and I'm putting yeah. all my eggs in this basket. I'm going for it and, uh, and I'm loving it. Wow. I, uh, I'm, you've, you've caught my attention because yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not an idiot. I like good numbers. So I know you created a PowerPoint for us. Why don't I yeah. turn it over to you so you can share and I could just be a watcher like, like everybody else. Why don't you, why don't you take it? Sure. Your... Yeah. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Um, desktop. Let me confirm that you can see that. I can. Okay, perfect. And you can see the full screen now. I can. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, with doing this for five years here and now really diving into it in the last six months uh, for the entire houses, I've found three things to be really, really key with a successful Airbnb business. So the first thing is location. Um, just like anything in real estate, location, location, location. Uh, the big thing about this is a, it's got to be in a safe neighborhood. Um, if 
all these other things check off, but it's not in a safe neighborhood. It does not matter. You will get terrible reviews after a while. Uh, people will not feel safe and people will stop booking. So it's got to be in a safe neighborhood. Uh, I really believe that near the airport is a really big one too. People are going to be flying in. They want to not have to get a $30 Uber ride to their place. They don't want to have to get a, uh, a rental car. So near an airport is a big thing. And then near attractions, um, I would also say, you know, going back to the airport one near a highway too, if I'm, you know, 10 miles away from the airport, but only a 10 minute drive because I'm right next to a highway, then that kind of trumps it. So near an airport or near a highway, uh, near attractions. So for us in Fresno, there's not many attractions. Fresno state would probably be the biggest one. And then in a proven area. So what I mean by that is you can go on to Airbnb and you can actually look if you go right here. So I've just done a little bit of a search here on this screenshot. And I actually did this at Bakersfield because I was curious at Bakersfield. So if you look over here on the right hand side of your screen, this is the map. And you can see that there's a lot of action here in Bakersfield. There's a lot of Airbnbs. Every little price tag you see here is a different Airbnb. So I already know that there's people doing it. Then the next thing I really want to look at is how many different reviews do they have? So right here, these stars, and then it says 81, 179, 71. That's a lot of different reviews that these places are getting. So I know, wow, like people are staying at this cozy whole house, a lot of space, park inside, five guests, two bedroom house for $146 a night. And there's 179 reviews there. Plus, this person's a five-star review. So if I'm trying to model mine, I'm probably going to look at this one and say, I want to model mine after this. So location is the number one thing, the very first thing that I'm, uh, I'm talking about here. The, the second part is the listing. Just like on the MLS, if you want to sell your house quick, it's got to have a really good listing. With the information here, they can see that, and this is just one of my places, by the way. Um, I'm a super host and a few others. This one, I didn't choose a super host just to give everyone a little bit of an idea. A super host is someone that's been doing it for a little bit of time. They've got a lot, a lot of five-star reviews. Airbnb has seen what they're doing and they decided, hey, we're going to make you a super host, which means if people search your area, you'll be one of the first listings that pop up. I've got other listings where I'm a super host. This one in particular, I don't have. And I like using this as an example because this was my highest grossing one in Fresno this last month. And I'm not even a super host yet. Like, so that just shows you that you can start this no matter if you are a super host or not, and you can start getting listings right away. And I believe it's because of both the description and the pictures. These are pictures from one of my Airbnbs. You can see it's got that luxury type of feel. It's got the business feel. It's got the family feel. It's got this like, it's going to draw in a bunch of different people. And because a lot of different people are going to be attracted to this, um, I'm not limiting myself to, you know, um, a college kid that is just looking for a cheap place to stay. I want to attract the people that want the nice stay, want it to feel like home, want it to be peaceful because they're in town for business. And for that reason, they're going to be okay with paying over $100 a night. That's the kind of person that I want to attract. If I want to attract a college student who's just traveling, I'm probably only going to rent out my couch, to be honest, because I know that they're pretty cool with just like sleeping on a couch for a night and paying 20 bucks. Uh, but that's not the kind of person I'm trying to attract. And then the other part of my listing is the summary and uh, the about me. Um, I really believe that if you have a really good summary, you give people that idea of what they're going to experience, plus you tell them a little bit about yourself, just like anything, people buy who you are rather than what you've got or what you're selling. And for me, I just try to um, give people an idea of who I am. And you know, I put in there, hey, I'm a real estate investor and I do Airbnb full time. So you know you're gonna get a great experience with me because I'm doing Airbnb full time. And then, so the, again, first thing's location, second thing, listing. Um, oh, going along with listing here too, the reviews. This is the most important part. Um, and, and this is why I love Airbnb too, Michael, is because I actually had a couple issues here recently. Just to give everyone an idea, I've hosted over 500 families with Airbnb and I've never had any sort of issue that Airbnb customer service can't help me with. I love Airbnb's customer service. I just had recently someone broke a door. Um, the house smelled like weed. I got a lot of uh, noise complaints from the neighbors and 
that was like the worst situation I've ever had. I went ahead and called Airbnb customer service, said, what can we do here? And they said, well, just send us an invoice for what you think the damage is and what you think you need. And boom, they sent me a check back for exactly what I asked for and took uh, any sort of reviews down. Plus, um, I've had another issue where someone had a review that wasn't really true and they took it down within like literally two hours. So the reviews are super, super important. As you build this up, you'll notice that you get better reviews. Now you can start to increase your price and you can start to attract even better people. And then lastly here, it's, it's the systems. I mean, that's been the biggest thing for me to scale. Now I have uh, three, actually four Airbnbs. And with that, I have to have systems in place. I don't go in and clean the places. If you're just starting out, I would really suggest getting used to cleaning the places and managing it on your own. That way you know how to outsource that when it's time to do that. Um, I got it down to a system where for me, I bring in my interior designer, they furnish the house. This is where I'm gonna lose a lot of people. If you are looking to do this with a full house and buy a house or you know, maybe you've got, maybe you're a real estate investor and you just got a subject to house and you paid nothing for it, this is where I might lose you. You're gonna to need to be ready to pony up about eight to $10,000 in order to furnish this and do it the right way with an interior designer. Um, and I'm okay with that because I know, like I said, I'm gonna get my investment back a lot sooner than if I'm just doing a regular tenant. So I'm gonna furnish the house, I'm gonna do it the right way, I'm gonna make it look different than anything else in my town. Um, I've got systems for my descriptions on my listings, I've got systems for my pricing, I've got systems for screening my guests, communicating with my guests, giving them instructions. And then most importantly, I think, is I have a big time system for my cleaning, which is outsourcing it to either a maid or to someone that's just looking for some extra income that has a flexible schedule. So I've got all these things down to a much more um, complex system. And Michael, what I'd really just like to offer all of your uh, listeners is a free consultation with me. Um, I'm, I'm not going to put a limit on this. Um, I, I will say that, you know, the sooner that you get to me, the more likely I'll be able to get to you and, and put you on my schedule. But I'd like to encourage people to uh, schedule a free consultation with me. Email me at kyle at fearlessflipping.com or you can DM me on Instagram which is Fearless Flipping 316 and would love to be able to um, you know, see what you currently live in or maybe what you're looking to purchase. Once again, Airbnb is great for whether or not you want to do this uh, in your own house or if you want to buy a house and start doing this. So um, I'm, I'm happy to help in any way. That's awesome. Uh, and I learned a lot and we will be talking for sure because I have some ideas on some houses I've been looking at going, I wonder... <laughs> I wonder if I should tackle this Airbnb thing. So we're going to talk after this. So um, that's amazing. So again, location, systems, you know, there, there is a, how many hours, I guess, that's what I want to ask. How much time does it take from you, even that now that you have the systems and all of this with each of your properties? Because you're probably averaging, what, three nights per stay or two nights per stay or how many? Yeah. I mean, it really depends. I would say the average is two to three nights, but I just had someone book for 56 nights, which mm. is really nice. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, they, you know, they get a great discount and honestly I end up making less, but um, I don't have to worry about, you know, the, the turnover. I don't have to worry about my maid showing up on time to clean everything. Yeah. Um, so that is a little bit of a weight off my shoulder. I'm willing to take a little bit of a yeah. um, less money for that. But yeah, I, I would say honestly right now, um, per listing, I probably put in about an hour a week. Okay. Um, and the only reason for that is because I'm getting on my phone, on my app in pretty much like once every two to three days and just sending off a copy paste message to people that are either coming in, checking out or are at, you know, their first night after the stay of, you know, Hey, is everything good? Um, right. the great part about that is that I actually, I have my, my maid, my manager, I'm putting air quotes up because she's really more of a manager than a maid. Yeah. I have her as a co-host on there and she's seeing all of these messages right now and I'm prepping her and I'm letting her know eventually I'm going to have you take over this and I'm going to be paying you right. monthly per listing for communicating with our guests. So that'll take it all off my shoulders too. Wow. More and more leverage. So so you're doing this fearless flipping and like that fourth house you just secured, you're just building, you're building capital so you can buy more Airbnb houses. That's what I think you're doing. 
Yeah, I mean, storing cash uh, just in case, uh, buying more houses, yes. I, I really think I just actually partnered with someone in town that you know, um, and we're going to be doing ideally one or two subject twos here pretty soon. He's really good at finding those, yeah. and he wants to bring the Airbnb model to it. So we're going to both uh, go after it together. Yep. Um, I, I think that's really the way I want to scale uh, Burr method and, and subject to, I don't want to keep on buying um, these, these properties, but yeah, I mean, the idea is that the safety net is flipping home, storing cash and, you know, market correction happens. I've got that cash uh, An Airbnb issue happens. Um, you know, if there's any, any issues at all that I just haven't even thought of yet, I, I'm just a person that likes to have that emergency fund and sure. just keep on pumping the emergency fund full and full and full. All right. Well, let's ask you one, at least one hard question because it's kind of yep. been easy so far. So what, what do you say to the folks that go, hey, Airbnb is a cute little model, but eventually the city or the hotels or some big Uber thing's going to come in and squash it and you're going to, you know, sure. the city's going to revolt, not do, you know, single night stays anymore. Yeah, no, and I've gotten that question too. The really cool thing about Airbnb is, you know, there's a need, right? You know, yeah. these customers, they come in and they're tired of having to check into hotels and having to deal with, you know, a ton of people being noisy in a, in a hallway. Uh, they're, they're tired of this like feel of a hotel. They want to feel like a home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then the other issue is that these guests have to pay a lot more for a hotel than if they're staying in an Airbnb, especially if they have four or five people, mm -hmm. that's one house versus two to three rooms, <coughs> excuse me, in a hotel. So I know there's a need. Yeah. And when I know there's a need, I know I can find a solution whether I've got Airbnb marketing it or not. And that solution that I've found is that there's traveling nurses, there's traveling construction workers, there's traveling business people all the time. And so what I'm doing is I'm preparing myself just in case something like that happens. I'm joining these traveling nursing Facebook groups. Um, I'm actually getting ready to start calling on businesses that I know have a lot of, you know, people that they send here in town, whether it's construction or I just had a guy who came into town literally for three months who is an auditor, you know, who would have thought. Hmm. And, and so I know if I reach out to these businesses and say, hey, how would you like to save some money and not send your people to hotels, but send them to my Airbnb, which has a lot of, a lot of really good reviews and they're going to get a great experience and they have me one-on-one -on -one to contact, would that be helpful for you? So those are the things that I'm preparing for. And then the worst case scenario to me, you actually had her on your show, Melissa Blake. Um, she has a, a house that she's furnished. And so I started doing a little bit of research too on furnished houses and those furnished houses can go for another $200, $300 above market value sure. to a long-term tenant. So worst case scenario, I'm still going to be cash flowing more than a regular tenant. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think, I think you hit it on the head. I think, I think there are certainly some cities like Las Vegas or other areas where the quote unquote government or the establishment can come in and try to create havoc or a tax or something. But I don't think that happens in cities like Fresno or Bakersfield or, well, you know what? You're just filling a need, right? There isn't huge hotels, you know, up and down the strip. Um, so I don't think it's a big concern, but I, but I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, I get it all the time. And I, I, I really agree with you too. I think that there's already been some cracking down in LA. Um, I think it'll eventually happen. I'm sure. not, I, I'm the kind of person that believes that everything's got an expiration date. I just want to pump it with as much as I can until that expiration date comes. Well, this has been so much fun, Kyle. Do me a favor. Give your email one more time for the free consultation. Yeah, uh, Kyle at fearlessflipping.com. And make sure to hit me up too on Instagram, which is fearlessflipping316. Well, everybody, hope you like the show. This is the Airbnb. This is the show you many of you have been asking for, and Kyle just crushed it. So thank you very much, man. And uh, have a good weekend if I don't talk to you. Thank you, Michael. Thanks.